Yeah, good day YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about attack angle of the chainsaw tooth. And what I'm referring to is attack angle is the top of this point to the top of the depth gauge. The angle goes from one point to the other point. So as your tooth comes around and hits the timber, it'll hit the timber and push back until the depth gauge touches the timber and stops it from taking a bigger bite. So that is the attack angle. And a lot of times, sometimes you might read some literature and it will say that, you know, oh, the tooth attacks the timber. It's probably because as the tooth comes around and hits the timber and the depth gauge, as you can see, it comes down this part leaves the bar, and in some cases the whole tooth momentarily can leave the bar and then resume back. So this type of action, this rocking motion, happens continually as every tooth goes through and bites the timber. And this is why it's so important that you've got the correct depth. So a progressive depth gauge which uh, we've got one here, is ideal to get a reasonable attack angle. Now, so that's your progressive depth gauge. Works a little bit better than your constant depth gauge. Now, the gauge at the back is sitting on a tooth. It's a brand new chain, and it's on 4.3 degrees. That's roughly what you get on a brand new chain. It could be you know, up, even up to five. A good attack angle is around about six. Now, it doesn't take much to file that to get six, hardly at all, especially if the depth gauge is not sitting perfectly flat. It's just a matter of running the file over it flat and be amazed. So we'll just do that. We'll pull this back a little bit. Just a little bit, not much, because if you file too much, <laughs> you could end up with a very high... So we're 5.2, 5.1, so it needs a little bit more. So we'll just give it a little bit more. You've got to be very, very careful here because you don't want much at all. Right. Still needs a little bit more. And hopefully we're around the six mark there we go 6.3 so that's a fairly respectable uh angle 6.3 to 7 now as you can see it was only a few passes of the file so the theory behind of all of this is is that at an attack angle of around 6.3 on this chain this is the ideal attacking uh angle if I was to measure, and we'll do that next, if I'm to measure the depth of that on the soft setting, that's roughly where we're going to be. Maybe even slightly less. So we'll just pull that out of the way. Keep my finger there so we don't lose where we are. And we'll see if we can zoom in to see whether you can actually see that. Yeah, I think you can see that. It's sitting quite good. So, I hope that explains the uh, attack angle. This type of digital angle gauge is very, very accurate. It's probably got an accuracy of 0.1 of a millimetre. Uh, they're available at some of your specialty uh, tool stores. This type of procedure is probably not for everybody. Uh, it's a lot slower than using a progressive depth gauge like that. Most people or a lot of people are still using the uh, constant depth gauge. And that's the little flat one. Uh, has a little slot in the front and a few little slots in the window that looks like this. Now, the other thing you'll notice, it's set at 0 0.065. So 0 0.065 is 
also where that would start. But because of the way that it sits on an angle, as the back of the tooth wears down, by the time you get to the end of the life, you won't have 0.65 of a millimetre, you'll have about 1.5 millimetres that will be filed down. This will actually make sure that the tooth still has a great attack angle. If you use this type of depth gauge, in the beginning the attack angle will be reasonable, but by the time you get down to the witness mark, your attack angle will be uh, not very good. You won't be taking large chips out. So that's what the attack angle is. So just to recap, when we talk about the attack angle of a tooth, we're talking about from the highest point of the tooth to the highest point of the depth gauge. As a tooth comes around and strikes timber, it pushes down till it hits the depth cage. It won't go any more because of leverage. Then the tooth has taken a large chunk of timber out, continues and straightens up by the force of the chain pulling until the, the next time that it hits again. So this type of rocking motion on every single tooth as it goes around. And that's why it's very, very important that you get the depth right. So at a minimum, you really should be using this type of gauge rather than this type of gauge. This type of gauge is great up to about, once you've worn away about three millimetres of uh, chain, you need to go a bit deeper than 0.65. As I said, this starts off at 0.65 from the very beginning of a brand new chain, as I've measured it, and by the time you get down to the end of the life of the chain, the depth will be about 1.5 uh, millimetres. That will probably keep up with that. You might have to go slightly deeper or take a little bit more off your raker to get your uh, digital attack angle around the six. If you've got a powerful saw, you could possibly go seven. Look, I hope that helps. It's just a bit of a video on digital attack angles. Uh, yeah, but at least do yourself a favor. If you don't have one of these progressive depth gauges, do yourself a favor and go out and get one because you'll be... Uh, uh, do it. your chain will work and cut much better once you get past about 50 or 60 percent of the life of the chain anyway thanks for watching give us a thumbs up and comments bye for now